Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to deploy our application into production using Firebase Hosting. Firebase Hosting is a complete production hosting deployment solution where we can upload our application and have it available globally in a content delivery network. This hosting solution would allow our application to scale globally to a very large number of users if necessary. Besides the performance aspect, Firebase Hosting also helps a lot with security. There will be an SSL certificate automatically provisioned by Firebase Hosting, so this means that all our pages are going to be available in an HTTPS server from the very beginning. We will not have to take care of this certificate ourselves, we don't have to provision it, renew it, etc. All of that is taken care of automatically by Firebase Hosting. Let's then get started deploying our application into production using Firebase Hosting. So the first thing that we are going to need for that is the production version of our application. Remember, the version that we have running here is the development version. We can generate the production version using the Angular CLI. Let's then switch over here to our package.json and let's create an npm script that is going to create the production version of our application. Let's give a name to our script. We are going to call it build colon prod. Now from here we are going to be calling the Angular CLI. Let's access the version that we have available here under node modules.bin. So this way we are sure that we are using Using the Angular CLI version that is defined by the package.json of our project. We are now going to call the build task and we are going to use the minus minus prod flag. Let's have a look at this npm script in action. We are going to switch over to the terminal and we are going to run the following command npm run build colon prod. After a moment you should receive an error message in this initial production build attempt. This message is due to the fact that we have not yet configured our production environment. So if you open here under the source folder, the environments folder, you're going to find here an environment.ts file. So this contains all the environment variables that we need in order to run our application in development mode. Then whenever we build our application in production mode, the Angular CLI is going to swap this object with a different version depending on the environment. For example, for the production build, we are going to be swapping this configuration that we have been using so far in development with the configuration available on this file here, environment.prod.ts, which is currently empty. So that is why we are getting this error on the console. We can see that we are trying to access here the property Firebase of this configuration object. And because that is not available, we are getting here an error. In order to fix this problem, we would typically create a different database for production than the one that we use for development. However, in the case of this simple application, we would like to deploy to production using this exact same configuration. So let's go ahead and copy the complete configuration that we have available here in development and let's paste it here to our production configuration file. Let's make sure that we change the value of this flag here to true. This is indeed the production configuration. Let's now switch back to the console and let's run our production build once again. After a couple of minutes, our production build has completed successfully. So if we open here our project folder, we should have here a dist folder containing the production version of our application. Let's now get ready for deploying this into production. So in order to do that, we are going to need to add Firebase hosting to our project. Let's switch here to the command line and run the following command Firebase in it. We are going to be presented again with the same menu that we saw before. Let's this time around select the option hosting by pressing space. Let's not add any other options at the moment and let's click on enter. Now we are going to be asked what is the name of our deployment directory. In this case, we should not use the default name of the public directory, which is public. Instead, we should choose the dist directory because that is the directory that contains our production build. We are also asked if we want to configure our deployment as a single page application, meaning that any URL that we hit in our server should always serve the index.html page. And that is indeed the case for our application. Our application is a single page. 
whenever we try to load it, we should always serve the index page. So let's choose the option yes. Next, we are getting asked if we want to receive a sample index.html file or if we already have one available. In this case, we already have here an index.html generated by the Angular CLI, so let's choose no. And with this, we have now added Firebase hosting to our project. Let's have a look at the several changes that were made to our project. If we open the firebase.json file, we are going to see that we now have here a hosting section. So we have here the property public. So this defines what is the folder in our project that is going to get deployed to Firebase hosting. As we have seen, that is going to be the dist folder. We also have here a couple of ignore rules. And we also have here the URL rewrite section. So here, using the wildcard syntax, we are saying that all requests should be served with the index.html page. We are going to see exactly what that means in a moment. Right now, let's switch back here to our console and we are going to run the following command Firebase deploy. This should be run here in the root of our project as usual. So this is going to deploy again the Firestore rules and the indexes like before, but we have also deployed here the dist folder to Firebase hosting. At the bottom of our deployment log, we have here a hosting URL pointing to our deployed application in production. Let's then switch to a larger window and see our application in action. We are going to paste in here the production URL and we are going to see that indeed our application is working as expected. We are getting here an error message, but we can see that the production application is there and the error message is due to the fact that the information available here on the courses page is not accessible to unauthenticated users. Let's then log in to our application using our administrator user. After a moment, we are going to get redirected back to the home page, and this time around, we can see that we can now read the course data. So we can see that our application is working correctly in production as expected. If we now switch to our database console and we select here the hosting tab, we are going to see that we have here the current version of the application available in production and we also see that we have here the possibility of connecting a custom domain to our application. So if we don't want to use this Firebase deployment URL, which is the most likely scenario, then we can deploy our application also in a custom domain. The way that this works is we would start by clicking on connect domain and here we are going to specify the domain or subdomain that we would like to link our application to. Let's say that for example we would like to link this to firebasecourse.angular-university.io. So this would be a custom production URL. Now in order for Google to be able to produce an SSL certificate link to this particular domain and install it on its servers, then there must be some verification that indeed we own this domain. So we would be able to verify the ownership of a given domain by adding this Google site verification unique identifier to our DNS settings. Once we have added this record to our DNS settings, Google would be able to confirm that indeed we own this domain and from there Firebase hosting would be able to provision automatically an SSL certificate for our application and deploy it on the Firebase hosting servers. All of these again would be taken care for us automatically under the hood. The only thing that we need to do in this process is to prove to Firebase hosting that indeed we own the domain. Going back here to our Firebase hosting console, we can see that we have here a list of the latest deployments. We can see here that the latest is the current deployment, but we also have here available a list of previous deployments. So if by some reason the latest deployment is not working, we can quickly roll back to a previous version using this option in the console. As we can see, Firebase hosting is very simple to use and very convenient. All the SSL setup is taken care for us under the hood. Now we are going to move on to a different part of the Firebase ecosystem. We are going to talk about Firebase storage. We are going to learn how to add file upload capabilities to our application without having to add any server-side component to it.